Okay, now we're ready for the fun part. So I'm going to take this layer one and I'm just going to call this base metal. And I'm going to put a smart material on here. So if I go to my smart materials, and, and then I've got a custom uh, folder here called uh, Ascension, but you can use uh, some of the other ones that are provided with the software. I'm going to show you how to make one real quick here though. Now why is it called Ascension? Uh, that's a secret for right now. So I have this base metal material that I've been using, but I'm going to make a new one just because I don't think it quite works for this particular model. Because what I need is I need some sort of base, some metal base that I can then put paint on top of, but it won't be the main material that you see on this object. It'll be something you only see where the paint has been worn away or in a few small areas that I choose where there is no paint to begin with. So I'll just hit new. And then if you get this little uh, smart material preview, this is just going to preview it on your model. If you hit this little push pin, you'll get um, the shader ball instead. I'm going to keep it as the shader ball for right now. So first things first is I need my base texture. So I will select that. And I just have a little collection of uh, different textures. And so if I find, there we go. And you usually, you usually want tiling textures for something like this. So I'll go ahead and pick this one. And then I need to increase the metalness degree all the way up huh? because it is supposed to be made out of metal. But it still doesn't really look that much like metal. So let's play with the roughness values a little bit. There we go, that's getting pretty shiny, but I'm gonna throw a texture in there instead. And even though this is a metal object, the roughness texture doesn't need to be a picture of some metal. In fact, I'm gonna to go to, let's say, some concrete maybe. And I'll just pick this one right here. Now as you see, that makes it significantly less rough. And the reason why that happens is that it's going to apply the lightness values from this texture to that 100% roughness value. So if, so if the color here is white, we would get 100% roughness. If it's black, we would get 0% roughness. Since this is, the whole thing is kind of a medium gray, even though our roughness value, even though our roughness value is 100%, it still looks very shiny. So let's change that. And I can do that with this curve. So I can make the light values brighter, make the dark values a little bit darker. So we have some patches of a uh, very low roughness material in there. There we go. Might make the whole thing just a little bit more rough. There we go. Excellent. And that'll be our first layer. So I'll call that base. There we go. Then I'll add a layer. And new layers come in with a roughness of zero and a metalness of 100. So I'll increase the roughness for now. And then I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to go to the degree right here and I'm going to change it to be from always to more on convex. And now if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see that now that is being applied to the corners here. 
And while I'm thinking about it, I forgot to add a depth texture to this metal. So I'll go to depth them, and I'll just pick, go back to my metal, I'll pick, say, this one. And as you see, that just adds some roughness. It is way too strong right now. I'll reduce the depth on that to maybe 5%. And then you see the depth for my edge wear is actually being added to that as well. So I need to change that to zero so that it doesn't have that effect anymore. But now you can see my metal is a little rough, it looks a bit more real. Now on my condition mask, you see here that the, um, the edges, they're very clean. It's a very smooth. Uh, edge wear, and I don't like that. So I'll add in a texture for this, and I'm going to go to, say, my grunge textures, and I'll put in let's put in this one, and I'll really up the contrast on this. And I can also change the texture scale. So watch how the, the edge wear gets affected as I increase the texture scale. See so yeah, that we can make it a little bit chunkier. A little bit lighter. Now the edge wear is pretty rough, but it's still a little too homogenous. It's applied everywhere around the edges. So then I can go in with a mask texture, and this will just block out the, the layer entirely on certain parts. So I'll go to my mask, and I'm going to pick some noise. So these are just some procedurally generated noise textures I made in After Effects. I'll pick, let's see, I'll do rough patches. And that, for the most part, gets rid of it. And I'll go in here, I'll invert it so it's mostly white now. So you see the difference that has? And maybe I'll increase the scale on that. Okay, so now we have some good edge wear. I'll label it as such. And I'm going to add in another layer. This time, though, this is not going to be made out of metal and it's going to have a roughness of 100. And I'm going to make it pretty dark because this is going to be some dirt and grime that has collected in the cavities. So I'll make it dark and I'm going to tint it just a little bit blue. Just a little bit. And for my degree, it's going to be more on concave. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't show up very well on the shader ball, but it will show up pretty well on our model. So I'll go to depth, add a little bit of depth to this, 5% maybe. It'll show up best around here on the shader ball, so if I increase the degree, you can see it's starting to show up there. And once again, I'll throw on a condition mass texture. maybe some dirt. Then I'm also going to throw on a bit of edge scattering. For this I'll use the cracked soil and you see how that pushes everything past where the crevices are. I'm going to reduce that just a little bit. Let me see if I invert this. Some Actually, I'll keep it the way it is. All right. I'll call this base metal two. And I will save it. And now I will have access to that smart material for any of my other projects. So to make this layer, I'm going to 
fill it, so I'll use the fill tool right here. And if I make this a little bit bigger, then you can see, yeah, you can see that dirt looking especially prominent there. I like that. So now I can adjust the scale and placement of this using these tools up here. So with the magnifying glass, I can make the textures smaller or bigger. I can make these a bit smaller. There we go. And then also, now that I see how it's being applied on my model, I might also want to adjust some of the individual parameters about my material. Although, in this case, I think I can get away with it just fine. So, now I'll just hit Fill Layer. And because I have two uh, 2K textures to fill out, that's two. So there's um, four different uh, textures it needs to make for each of those. It needs to make the color, normal, roughness, and metal. And it needs to apply that three times, because there are three layers in this smart material across two 2K UV sets. So there's a lot it needs to do and as such this could this takes a little while. Alright. So now our first layer here is finished. So this may look a little bit like generic metal, but that's okay because we are not, we're going to add more layers to help break this up.